Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the Crispy Donut Community Salvation. Uh, if you missed out on the pre-order of these because they did close it down, he is opening it up for my viewers for maybe a day or so. So if you do want to get on this pre-order, there will be a link below that you have to follow. And the password is early bird, all one word, and that will give you uh, access to the pre-order and that'll secure you a spot. Now, they are limited spots for the pre-order, so if you want one of these uh, before they are available to the general public, then you want to uh, follow that link and go ahead and place your order. But this is how they come, come with a Kydex sheath, a tech lock style sheath that, uh, I mean, clip, that you have a, a off where it's locked out. This is not going to open. You swap that over, press this down, and you you put your, you can adjust these for the size of your belt, and you can uh, orient this in a, several different ways. I carried it as a belt knife just because of the weight of the knife and the size. But nice kind of sheath, nice little spot to push off on, and a nice positive click as well. This is being called a EDC fixed blade. For me, it's a little bit more of a belt knife because of the weight, but it does have the size. It's, it's under 7 inches at 6.94 with a 3.25 inch blade, and I think it's a very attractive blade. This particular one has a stonewash finish, and uh, they're offering this finish and a black wash finish as well. There are a few changes that are be made to the to the final production like they're going to be getting rid of this area right here so you have a sharpening toil that's excellent um, they're going to be moving the uh, logo a little bit and the blade steel is going to be moved down here sorry about the voice i'm recovering from blade show but i need to get this done so y'all could have an opportunity if you missed out on that early bird uh, you have a, a dual grind on this. You have a hollow grind here. That's going to be your nice slicey portion. Pretty much a straight edge up until that transition point. And uh, this part up here with the flat grind is a pretty robust area. You got a very thick tip there. It's around 34 thousandths behind the edge up here. So do some light prying or whatever you need to do. This portion right here is about 20 thousandths and should be nice and slicey. Your blade steel is S35VN, and uh, I, I like S35. It's a, it's an excellent higher-end steel that performs really, really nicely. You got very nice jimping that grabs a hold of the thumb very well, as you can see there. And I love the fact that they put some jimps up here for doing some controlled, finer tasks. That's an excellent little spot to have it on an, on an EDC style fixed blade to where you can get to that tip. Those grinds give it a nice aesthetic, I think. And of course, you know, if, if it was me, I would like to have a hollow grind all the way to that tip just because I like them nice and slicey. But, you know, if you need something that can handle just about anything, you know, this would do a great job. You got the heavier task up here in the front in that tip area if you need to bore down on something, pop something up or whatever you want to do with it there. And that, that nice and slicey portion with that hollow grind. Now, even though I don't love to test prototypes because I'm not sure if I was the first one to get it or not, uh, we're going to do some cutting with this just to see how it performs. For this knife, and being that it has a hollow grind in the back, this is where this knife is really, really going to excel. Uh, it's, it's a slicey knife because of that hollow, and it was nice and sharp. It was passing through this material very fast, and that's two times sped up, so you can see how fast I was really getting through it. I did get hung up a few times because of that edge termination, but that's something that's going to be addressed in the final production, so not something I was really worried about, but definitely had some good slicing capabilities. Now we go to test the ergos on this piece of birch. Sorry about my voice, uh, I'm still recovering from blade show. And it was performing well because once again we're in that uh, hollow grind section where it's thinner, slicier and it had a good edge now for the most part this was pretty comfortable whenever i started putting a lot of pressure into it i could feel that section where that lanyard is that to me was the only hot spot that i really had um i think i would have preferred the scales not to be shadow boxed and maybe a little bit thicker just for longer comfort for longer cutting 
Um, like I said, the main thing was that uh, lanyard spot was pretty uncomfortable whenever I was pushing really, really hard. But other than that, I did not feel it. So could this be done? Yes, can. Now we move to the half inch twisted sisal rope. And it didn't have a ton of bite. Uh, especially near the tip. Uh, it, it had a decent bit of bite toward that hollow ground section and one thing that I kind of struggle with is uh, where that grind uh, transitions to the flat grind up there by the tip. It's a lot thicker. It's 30 something thousands so it's not going to be as slicey. So I was starting the cut there and then I would end it toward the back so I, it, it was struck I was struggling until I found the sweet spot to cut with the knife. Um, I did kind of feel that uh, lanyard piece kind of digging at me whenever I was pushing hard, even with the gloves on, so, you know, something just to be aware of. I think this is more geared for harder use with that tip area, maybe some light prying, um, and it, it just, when you're trying to start cut, cutting with the tip area, it's just going to be a little bit more difficult than, say, a, you know, super slicer or if this knife would have been hollow ground all the way to the tip but i would say it did, it did fairly well um i think i ended up getting through around 40 cuts maybe a little bit more i can't remember i, I know I at least had 40 there and the edge felt like it held up nicely um like i said i just had to put a little bit more pressure because of how thick it was this was another area that struggled a little bit is because of how thick it is at that actual tip doing drag type cuts it's going to require a little bit more force into the material the second cut i put a lot of force into it and i was able to get through it rather nicely because it had a decent little it was sharp up there in the front but right there where i'm using that flat ground section it's it's much thicker it's a little bit harder to get through this material not something that i usually encounter because i usually you know uh, go for the thinner slice of your blades. I'm going right behind that transition on the rubber so it did fairly well once I got it started. Um, it just depends on you know what what section of the knife I get the cut started with. Um, it did struggle a little bit on here because I'm using that tip portion once again. You can just feel it is kind of almost tearing the material um, and here it, it's kind of lacking a little bit of bite I'm doing a little bit more of a sawing motion, but you know, something that could go away rather quickly once I sharpened it. So, you know, probably not the end of the world here. Um, it got through all the stuff and it got through it, you know, fairly, fairly reasonable. All right, I hope you all enjoyed that. I thought it performed rather well, especially in the holding when you're cutting stuff with this hollow. I think it passed through the material very nicely. Um, like I said, it's a little bit different up here in the front because of that transition. It gets a lot thicker. So you just got to put more pressure into it if you're going to use that portion, like to do drag cuts and stuff like that. But it did all of it, and it got through everything rather well. I did talk about a hot spot that was created whenever I was pushing into that wood really hard, and that is this portion right here. Um, I, this caused me a hot spot. Uh, I would have loved to see that night in there, maybe just a hole through the scale. And if it were me, I would have rather uh, the scales to not be shadow boxed, just to fill out the hand nicer and maybe a little bit thicker. But as it sits, it did well. And, uh, you know, those are more of a nitpick unless, you know, it's something you could be, you know, doing very hard cuts like that, then that may become an issue. You can get it in this black micarta, canvas micarta scales, uh, T8 screw on, bolt on construction. So if you need to remove this to clean it out, you can. Um, and it also comes in sprinkled colors like their theme. I didn't really get to check that out, but uh, if that's your thing, you can go ahead and get that instead of this one. Now, even though these are flat scales, you know, the ergos were pretty fairly good for me. Um, you know, if you were to do some penetrating, you got, you know, somewhat of a guard where this comes up and then you can, you know, bear down in that pinch grip right here. Uh, something I enjoyed using this, how you have these uh, chamfers on both sides of the scales. I enjoy using this pinch grip. You know, if it's, it's something you don't have to put a lot of pressure into, it works well for that. 
Let's get a weight real quick. First in grams without the scale, 123.8 grams are with the uh, sheath. I'm sorry, the sheath. It comes in at 212.2 grams or 7.48 ounces, <laughs> 4.37 ounces. And that's why I say for me, it's kind of considered a belt knife because uh, of the weight. You can still consider it a EDC fixed blade if you're going to belt carry it. You know, that it just depends on how you classify your EDC fixed blade. For me, EDC fixed blade is something I would either clip to the pocket, uh, could wear as a neck knife, or inside the waistband, which you could do that with this as well, inside the waistband. But it's something that I don't really notice it's there. This one I did, but you know I'm I'm a smaller guy, so you know depending on your size and and how you classify things, you can classify it however you want. Now for some quick size comparisons, we have the Sin Cut Waxahachi and the Se Azula. Uh, it's a little bit smaller than the Waxahachi, and it's a little bit larger than the Azula. Next is the Artisan Sea Snake and the Bradford Guardian 3. It's a little bit bigger than both of these. All right, nitpicks and complaints. I already discussed them, but we'll go over them again. Of course, I would have liked the hollow grind to come all the way up to the tip, but you know, it's nice and slicey here. And if you need something with some more strength up in the front, this will be perfect for you. Um, they're fixing the sharpening choil, so that's awesome. This, for me, like I said, it's only a hot spot whenever I was really bearing down. So, you know, I, I guess it just depends on what you plan on using it for. I would have liked to see the scales cover that, maybe a hole if you still want a lanyard hole. Um, and of course, I would have liked to see the scales come all the way out to the edge and maybe a little bit thicker. <laughs> just because it's a fixed blade. But that said, I thought it was far comfortable enough to get everything I need done and what I use the EDC fixed blade for it would have been fine um, but overall I like the knife I thought it performed well especially in this section right here I think it looks good um, I, I think it's fairly priced especially for you know a small uh, company like the CDC um, it's a nice quality product. I'm pretty sure the OEM on this is Kubi Knives. If I'm wrong, I'll put it up here. But uh, I think they did a good job. Uh, you get, you know, Kydex sheath, nice uh, tech lock style system there, and a high quality fixed blade. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.